Hey, this is Joshua Trilobite Studios. And this is Carl. And today we are actually going to reply to a comment by Yakko's Muppet on our zoo video on the our thoughts of the Jurassic World Dominion Biosync Sanctuary ecosystem and how it works and how it works and by god that's a mouthful <laughs> that is a it is a mouthful um but thank you for the comment also thank you to everybody recently who's been subscribing we've seen a massive spike uh in our growth and we actually just recently hit 100 subscribers Woohoo! and if we don't have a q a video up before this video goes up then make sure you look out for a q a video where we're going to be reading off some of our favorite comments and also uh answering your questions from the comments on that q a video so keep your eyes peeled for that and uh, make sure you like and subscribe and let us know we're doing a good job Anyway, Biosyn ecosystem. All right, so the Biosyn Valley, because it's, it's a valley. Yeah. Uh, is located in northern uh, Italy. Yes. Now, my question, now you had a good comment mm -hmm. about how these warm weathered animals that came from Sorna and came from Isla Nublar, how would they adapt to the environment of northern italy right because northern italy is during the summer it's you know kind of like it's a moderate climate but during the winter those winters get really bad they get a lot of snowfall especially if they're in the alps like because i we don't well what was the name of the the mountain range that it was in it starts with a d i don't know off the top of my head but i'm I'm assuming it's part of the Alps. Yeah, I'm gonna assume it's part of the the Greater Alps because you know it's right there on the border between Switzerland and Italy. Italy. So it's a very cold climate. We know it's a very cold climate uh, because historically, you know, when Hannibal tried to take the elephants through there, of course that was during winter, but it still it still wasn't fun. <laughs> and uh, men they, froze to death. Yeah, literally, men and animals froze to death. Um, so we're just kind of wondering about, first of all, the, the climate is so, like, like we were talking about, it's so drastically different from Isla Sorna and Isla Nubar. Now there, we know that dinosaurs are not just, you know, hot, they're not cold blooded reptiles that lumber around waiting for the sun to warm them up. We know that they're warm blooded. We know that they, uh, have adapted to every environment basically on earth when they were, uh, when they were around. So it does make sense that some species would be able to survive in a place like the Biosyn uh, Sanctuary. Valley. Valley. Valley Sanctuary, whatever you want to call it. But other species, warmer species, species that come from tropical environments, I don't see... I don't see how this works unless they were genetically modified by the people at Biosyn. Uh, since those animals most likely came from Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna, which means they're Indian and or Mashrani creations. Right. I don't believe they, that Biosyn would have had the technology to re-avamp them. Right, to go the back in and like... However, if this is a true sanctuary, animals in, with a more fragile spectrum on temperature would have had to have proper care and husbandry right for that i was gonna say maybe it's almost a thing like horses you know because like people have horses in very cold climates and what they do during the winter is they put blankets on them maybe I we're doing i highly doubt that someone hey. wanted to put a blanket <laughs> on a triceratops maybe, however maybe we're doing something what i'm like saying that. is maybe there's another part of the facility that we don't see that's more of like a stable oh like for during or like a cow shed that when winter comes they can put the animals that are not as adapted to the cold there right i mean that 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 makes a lot of sense actually because we you know if they're if they come from tropical climates they're not going to they're not going to be able to survive in a in a temperate climate like this just i mean animals are adaptable don't get me wrong but if you have lived your entire life in the desert and all of a sudden you go to a place where there's snow on the ground well guess what you're probably not going to make it through that first winter um so here's something that has that bugged me when we saw the movie and since the movie has been out can you believe it's been a month already that's gross um <laughs> something that's bugged me since the movie has been out is we know that there were three at least three or well at least two apex predators in the biosyn valley Plus the very ornery Therizinosaurus. Which was blind. Yes, that was blind. 
How did they stop squabbles from happening over territory? I know that they said that they had the chip in there, but is that like a chip that makes them docile? Uh, and that's from what I saw from the movie. Yeah, because uh, obviously movie, it didn't work when they brought well, the, them all into the center of the facility. They couldn't but, control them from fighting. My thing is, I do believe that they had some... Because if you watch the scene where they're like on... Everything's on fire. Yeah. You can see kind of like markers uh, going through the river. So I'm assuming they had some type of invisible fencing that kind of made huge paddocks where certain animals just kind of were in certain pins. That's assuming a lot. Also, no, that wouldn't make any sense because Rexy and the Giganotosaurus meet. We're in the same pen. Yeah. yeah, they're in the same pen, and that's just stupid. I mean, no one said this movie was full <laughs> of smart people. No, but, I mean, you would think that they wouldn't... I don't think that that's... I think the beacons are just there to, like, help the audience show what's going on. I don't think they actually meant anything in the in the movie itself. Now, I, I do agree with you that maybe there was invisible fencing, but maybe it was around the entire thing. You know, and how did the pyroraptor get on the dam? It jumped. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, you're, the, the whole premise of that pretty much went out the window. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm uh, genuinely not sure. Now, the one thing, and going back to the invisible fencing, and the reason why I, I want to stick on this point is because when Claire walks into the headquarters and was trying to get the computer started she made a comment saying the system's just like jurassic worlds yeah where at jurassic world they had the chips which track uh, the animals no they also were part of an invisible fence system okay so that's why i'm going with the invisible fence theory is that the animals chips not only help uh, send messages to, for hurting the animals from one pin to another but also it told the animals this is your area you can't go anywhere until we tell you to i i don't know because we have the contradictory evidence in i mean the statement the, yeah that does cor corroborate the uh the idea of the invisible fence but but yet then the pyroraptor on the dam right and throws we, that all out the window and we also have rexy and the giga in the same pin which i mean come on that's just there's also, no excuse for that like if they if they the, the blind therizinosaurus also in the same pen yeah if you're i'm like how are you one if you're a blind animal how did have you not been eaten yet <laughs> unless it's just going around swinging i guess uh, so and two yeah the t-rex and giga in the same paddock even if it is you know an invincible fence territory it's a bad idea no matter which way you look it's at. a really bad idea so that's why i think yeah maybe they did have invisible fence but it was just around the entire sanctuary, and then the animals were allowed to roam free in the sanctuary, and then kept, then and the, then monitored with the with the tracking chip. Th then it, they kind of throw us out the whole premise of a sanctuary. If the animals are supposed to be in security, we get they're uh, able to fight amongst themselves. I mean, but then again, we would call like Yellowstone an animal sanctuary, right? Yeah, but then animals were not brought there; they're already there. Sure, but that's the wild. Uh, ecosystem but right, yet so maybe not, maybe that's you know. what they're trying to replicate here they're trying to make it more of like a wild natural ecosystem for the animals where the animals aren't super cared for they're not like fed regularly like, so at Jurassic more like park. a wild animal park not a true sanctuary right okay i guess i think that's what that that would be my best guess at it now let's break down the actual ecosystem the animals, we just said that, you know, maybe the animals aren't being fed, but 90%, I am 90% certain that the animals had to be fed while they are there. Uh, How well, else are you going to feed a Giganotosaurus and a T-Rex? Remember the deer population? Okay, wow. That was that's, supposed to be like a genetic deer population. That's which... like a midnight snack. Unless, unless Rexy eats like 17 deer, that's a, a weird arbitrary number. But unless she's eating a lot of deer every day... That's a light snack for two predators that since big. an elderly predator of her age. Yeah. Because she was, what, 30 years old? Which is, I think, the oldest T-Rex fossils that we have. Right. So, so sh she's a senior citizen. One, it's hard for them to hunt. And then two, you know, it's, it's very unrealistic to say that the animals are going to hunt deer as their primary game source because... You think about animals today. It's like a lion eating a mouse. Exactly. Like, why would you it's, do that? It's risk reward. Like even if you make that kill, right? It might have been an easy kill to make, but you still expelled calories to make that kill. And you make that kill, 
and now you've only taken in, let's say, I don't know how many Maybe calories you think are in a day. Maybe that's the slim down diet. Maybe. <laughs> you know, that's oh, you're too fat. You must slim down and chase a deer. But like, no, I mean, I'm being serious. Let's let's say there's 15,000 calories in like a deer, which is, it's probably a lot more than that. But, you know, a Tyrannosaurus Rex needs a lot more than 15,000 calories a day. Like some people eat 15,000 15, calories a day. I'm pretty sure one <laughs> McDonald's hamburger meal would uh, pretty much cap you right there. Yeah. So what I'm saying is there's that that's so unrealistic so these animals need to be fed while they're here they can't unless they're letting them hunt and kill each other and that's and, they, and they're allowing the the herbivore population to be kept in check by the carnivore population but then you run into the risk of over hunting you run into the risk of um of herds being completely wiped out because of the predators well before the end of the movie where it shows the other two rexes which by the way were the buck and doe rex from, yeah i know they said they, uh, they confirmed the it world that would have only made Rexy and the Giga, as far as we're aware, the only two large carnivores. Because we didn't see any medium carnivores in this facility. No. We saw some so, small ones. We saw a few small ones, but which would have been going over juveniles if they could catch them. Or going for deer. Or the deer. That one's more realistic. Yeah, that's a lot more realistic. However, what I'm saying is, for only two carnivores that, in the environment, it looked very hazardous to walk across yeah it, it was definitely a dense coniferous forest so nine times out of ten the prey's probably gonna get away right so i do believe if they were hunting the other inhabitants of the valley it could manage uh since there's only two of them to have gone through a proper i guess uh ecology i guess is the word or ecosystem because there's only two predators and they're not breeding because one's yeah. a giga and yeah. one's a t-rex so there would have been only there would have been enough prey for both of them well we don't know if they were the only two large predators um, they, they were the only two that we saw on screen no because if you remember when alan grant's being flown and he goes the only one we have is a giga and then it's the only giga that they had oh that's right okay and then rexy got there like literally an hour or two before they did okay so yeah that that's a bit more realistic but it still doesn't seem then it turns into more of a nature preserve and not a sanctuary where a sanctuary would be we're controlling these populations we're monitoring these populations we're making sure that they're being fed we're making sure that they're being properly cared for during the winter we're making sure that all this stuff happens so they don't just die so you know the predators aren't hunting so it's not really a sanctuary it's just a nature preserve at this point pretty much yeah um i mean biosins basically brought these animals in just so they could understand them better to use i guess paleo technology uh, for other projects i guess at least that's what the opening of the film gave yeah but however like, what's the point <laughs> bugs man bugs bugs i guess uh no nah, i'm we're, i'm kidding but to go back to the actual heart of the question i do believe that with the technology that biosyn got from jurassic world with the computer systems plus the environment of which they had the animals in that they most likely were kind of a let go bases where they had tracking and you know following the animals to monitor them but they were more hands off than they should have been yeah i would agree with that because i think the tracking system that they inherit from jurassic world i don't think they had an invisible fence system except around the whole perimeter of the valley i think that with the tracking system you know you can monitor when the giga and when rexy get too close to each other so like in that scene where we saw uh you know them them squabbling over the deer carcass and rexy backs down and walks away i'd imagine like some sort of alert goes off in the like the the headquarters where they monitor the animals that you know their two apex predators are getting close to each other and then when they walked away it was like all you know like hands down right because they could probably get a helicopter or something out there fast enough to trank them or because of a chip, someone just picks up a PS2 controller and goes, nope, back away, back oh, away, yeah. back away. Either that or like they maybe they mentally shut them down, right, using the chips. Or they make them both start 
backing uh, away, backing away, or make them both like herd towards the center of the island, or go back to their respective territories, right? Maybe. I mean, there was not. There's more questions than answers with what we saw. There's a lot more questions than answers, because it, it's it doesn't work like a typical zoo. It doesn't work like a typical animal sanctuary. It's more of a monitored nature preserve. Pretty much. Yeah, it's literally uh, what that. It's Biosyn somehow getting all these animals in their very large valley area that they purchased and kind of just seeing what happens. Yeah, basically just letting them go hog wild. But we still didn't answer the question of what happens to the species that are tropical in the winter. Most likely, they probably just die. Wow. If the animals are not being properly taken care of, like we were saying, the animals most likely were just dead. Yeah. No, I, I mean, you're right. If, I mean, they they said that there's a road system uh, in the movie when uh, Jeff well, Goldblum goes out. We see out, that, too, yeah, when he uh, drives the Jeep out. You know, there's all this other stuff in place that makes you think that this is an actual sanctuary. However, when you start looking at it in... Uh, critically critically there's no real evidence for for sanctuary sanctuary it's more of like we said or you said it's just kind of a nature preserve that biosyn is just watching kind of like someone buying a thing of an ant farm and just you kind of watching it and you might shake it once or twice. yeah you just like let the ants go and then maybe for fun you bring in another colony of ants and like see what happens and see which one wins which is horrible but I think that's the best analogy that we've got is it's basically an ant farm. It's a big scale ant farm except with two queens. Yeah, with two queens and and you know a lot of <laughs> and a lot of dinosaurs. Now, <clears throat> something I also want to address the ADS or the aerial defense system. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, that's it. I don't really no, care. I, is is it the ADS? It, yeah, you okay. Had it right. The ADS. It is the most ridiculous idea I've it ever made heard. no sense whatsoever. No, it made no sense. Now, I understand if, you're, if you've are if you got a nature preserve, you still want to keep your species in that preserve. Yeah, you want to contain the flying species, which the microchip could do that. Right. However, how did they turn off the uh, ADS for the plane? That was not theirs. Oh. <laughs> I don't you know. You want to explain that one? <laughs> See, no. Well, my problem with it is, you know, in terms of, like, this ecosystem, normally... Like, we know that pterosaurs w would have migrated a lot, more than likely. Well, the, now you've stuck just them... just kind of flying around. They don't really have a set area. Right. But probably now, a breeding ground. But, but now you've stuck it. them in this tiny environment where they're not allowed to fly, but so high and so far. In an environment that they probably don't even like to begin with. I mean, it's... it's heavy forced. Right. It's better than a bird cage, I suppose, like we see in... Uh, JP3. JP3 and, and, and in Jurassic, Jurassic World. World. It's better than an aviary. But it's still, like, in terms of being a uh, uh, an animal sanctuary, it doesn't really fly. But, um, da -da -da. <laughs> but it, it doesn't really fly, does well, it? Well, the one thing that uh, irks me is these animals... Came from floodplains with Pteranodon and Questoquatlus. Yeah, came from a like flood coastal plain. coastal floodplains, basically. Think Florida. Um, where on Earth do you see that uh, type of habitat on in this uh, sanctuary? Yeah, there's no, there's no. It's suit. literally like from one end to the other, just covered in forest. It's forest. Like there Which is there is no real begs suitable the habitat. Question: then Where are the sauropods there? Because it's like, if you put sauropods, especially the size of a Jornatus, some of those trees should have been cleared. Yeah, those trees are going to be down. <laughs> They're not going to... It's not Plus, like... they also have Brachiosaurus, apparently. Did they? Yeah, because remember at the end of the movie, there's two of them in the lake, and then we both kind of cringe. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like, Why like, are they uh... in the lake? <laughs> yeah, no, I remember. I mean, it's like, you put these huge sauropods, they're going to be eating the trees. They're going to clear uh, huge areas, which would have made, you know, meadows and stuff like that, yeah, which is cool. It is cool. However, how long... Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt your train of thought. How long has this facility been running? I think I read somewhere where it's like 2013-ish is when they kind of started building the facility. So, 
in around like 2015 is when all hell with Jurassic World broke loose. Right. So they were like getting ready. Or so something. when did they get the larger sauropods to the facility? Is what I'm at, is what I'm getting at. Okay. Um. Uh, well, in 2018 is when uh, Fallen Kingdom happens, mm -hmm. and that's when you see at the end of the movie someone get handed a briefcase with Dreadnoughtus DNA in it. Yeah. Which I think was Biosyn getting the briefcase. Okay. So, so probably, four years, because it happens in real time. Yeah, so it's probably four years ago. Okay. Because when Trinatus probably started uh, taking to the sanctuary. So yes, we would have seen we would have seen cleared trees. We would have seen some meadow type environments where you know the trees have been cleared. But that we don't see that. No, we, we don't literally see, that at see all. just forced I everywhere. Think, I think they were trying to go for the JP two feel with it, you know. But like, even in JP2, you had open areas. Yeah. Where it showed animals, you know, of the grazing of uh, medium and large herbivores clearing areas. That was the whole point of the game trail in the long grass. Yeah. Granted, I think that I think that helps in terms of like, oh, if we're letting these animals all loose to just do what they want, it helps in terms of like they're not gonna hunt each other to extinction because it is so like densely forested. Like we already talked about, a lot of your hunts that you're doing as a predator are not going to be successful because not of that. in a forest especially with uh the size of a rex getting in that dense forest yeah so i think that kind of like plays a bit more into the the possibility that yeah these animals could be let out and just kind of like prey on each other or prey on other species and still not wipe each other out and like we said there's only two predators but well, there's Still. supposed to be uh, at least 20 species, but yet only two of them that were major predators. Right, two apex predators, what we'll say. Which begs the question, what were the other species? Right, what were the other predators? I know Morse I mean, Intrepidus we... was one. Right, Pyroraptor. Pyroraptor, but they're uh, both small species. Dilophosaurus. Again, small species. Right, but I mean in, in Jurassic Park, not in real life um no i'm saying in jurassic park they're still considered a small species okay um i i can't think of any of the other predators off the top of my head i do find it funny that we finally saw the iguanodon in the film yeah and uh after watching it four times also should we address the cave i rather not okay i rat uh, we can address <laughs> no that i don't i don't video, want to man. to be honest because that's a whole <laughs> shtick in itself i think that kind of covers it then I, do, I hope this answers uh, your question. Um, if not, leave it in a comment. Maybe we can, uh, you know, try to get a conversation going in there. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do hope that answers your question, uh, Yakko's puppet. Muppet. Muppet. Close I enough. am sorry. That's all right. Thank you for the comment, and uh, I think that does it for us. So this is Carl. And this is Josh. And we are signing off. Bye.